Hello and welcome. Glad you stopped by to give this video a shot and take a look at it. If you're into building guitar pedals or playing guitar, then this video is probably for you. Uh, I'm fairly new to building pedals. I'm not new to playing guitar. I've been doing that for a long time, but pedals I've only done recently. And this is one of those ones where it it's built as a kit that should be easy to do. Uh, the instructions look pretty decent. A little on the expensive side. It's the Stumac Tape Op Delay Pedal. Uh, I ordered it uh, a few weeks ago, came in. I would say, you know, shipping was really good in time. Price a little high on the cost side. It's a little more than I've paid for some of the other kits. But the instructions are well done, generally. And in this video, I'm going to go through pretty much step by step, as close to step by step as, you know, feasible in this amount of time. This video is a little long. I might end up cutting it into two parts. I don't know. Uh, depends on how much I rambled inside of the video. Uh, but I will go through it and I'll give my sort of perspectives on what I discovered and what I learned and hopefully you can take some of that back to your own build. Uh, I'll save the overall conclusion for the end of this video. I kind of know where it's going to go and I know how I'm going to end it, but you, you'll follow me through this process. I'll follow me through this process because I'm editing this pretty soon here. And there were some points of frustration. So hopefully it's not too bad for you. And I'll leave some of it in, take some of it out. But uh, that's about it. Um, like, subscribe, comment. If you like this stuff, come on back. Uh, I am making videos like these more frequently lately. I'm trying to do weekly. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. But anyways, enjoy. Take care. Here we are with the analog delay pedal from Stumac. This is the first one in this series of where I'm going to kind of go over what's inside the box and my initial impressions. I have the instructions, which by the way are available on their website. They are in a PDF form. They seem really pretty decent. They don't come with, so you got to go get them from there. And we have the enclosure with a, a sticker with what appears like some decent vinyl. Let's set that aside. And here's the enclosure pre-drilled. The finish looks really pretty good overall. Standard 1590B type of enclosure. And we have the electronics components. Here are the, the screws to hold the enclosure back on. And what do we have here? I'm going to grab my knife. Is my knife ah, over here? And we'll open some of these up. These seem to be PCBs. We'll start with those. Yeah, looks like pretty decently made PCBs. There's the three PDT board. Interesting how it's separate boards, not the same. We got a couple of boards. And what do we have over here? We've got all of the uh, the components, the sort of analog electrical components. Let's see what we got inside here. The instructions do have a bill of materials in there too, which we'll have to compare to here in a little while. We got um, oh, some stickies. I don't know if we need that. Uh, three PDT switch, an LED, uh, all the potentiometers and knobs and jacks. You know, from what I can tell, the potentiometers look pretty decent quality. Let's see if focus picks that up. Come on, autofocus. No. This autofocus is annoying. I need a darker background or get rid of that. What does it say on it? Um, uh, do, 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 alpha. That's all it says on there. Looks like an A type. What do we have here? Uh, alpha. Well, they all say alpha. Are they A's or B's? Alpha just says alpha A. So I, I'm guessing they're. Unless that's the brand name, alpha. I'm not sure why this one has a plastic cover on it, but we've got four of those. 
Got a little bit of wire, which I have a suspicion that's not enough, but we'll find out. DC jack, nine volt. I'm gonna guess that's center negative like it's supposed to be. Four, what appear to be fairly decent quality knobs. Not big on the color, they're red. Uh, quarter inch TS jack, they're both quarter inch TS jacks. Uh, they look decent enough build quality. Yeah, we'll, we'll set this stuff up out of the way here. We don't need it. Probably need the wire though, but let's see. Let's open the rest of this up. There's our LED, and it's like a, uh, yeah, it's the actual LED part for it. Let's set that aside. A three PDT switch. Come on. I don't want to lose the washer and nuts, so we're going to put those on so they don't get lost. There's that. And PCBs, get those kind of out of the way. And here we have what appears to be all of the electronics components in this bag. And I was looking at them briefly just through here, and they seem to be decent quality. We got the analog, sorry, the electrolytic capacitors. Now I might test these to see what they're actually running at and kind of making sure. They, they look, although, you know, nowadays I say look like decent quality, but you just, you don't know anymore. There are so many fakes out there. Hopefully, they've kind of vetted the components and bought from a reliable vendor. But I suppose anything is possible. We've got the sockets, three of them. Well, that's interesting. There's, there's, only, there's three dip sockets and only one ship. Don't know why. And here is, is this a PT2399? I think it is. Maybe you had to put two of those together to get one? Let's see. I think this is a 23. Yeah, it's a 23.99. Okay, and other caps. We've got uh, yeah, some decent film caps. Get those out of the way. You know, some of them are polarized and some of these aren't. So we'll have to deal with that. There's the LED. So what I tend to do on these sorts of projects is sort of sort my parts by type. So we'll get you know, all the caps kind of together here. I'm going to get one of these. Now those are marked on top, so these caps can kind of go there. There. Uh, those capacitors. What are we left with? Transistor. And we got uh, diode, diode, another diode here. And as usual, bunch of resistors. And uh, what's interesting is they are not labeled in value. That's kind of a bummer. I'm going to have to go through and figure out what all these are. Well, that kind of stinks. Thanks, Stumac. It, you know, even the other kits I've had, had them at least grouped together by numbers. You know, so put all the... 20s in one set and all the 1Ks in another set, etc. But uh, they're not, so I'm going to have to go through all of those and figure out what they are. But I guess that's life. Let's take a look at the instructions here, real quick. Uh, tools needed. Well, they have this included for the resistors. But 
you know, since it's printed in black and white, I might have to bring my iPad over here or just go through them all. At least they have it here so you can check, but, you know, colors can be hard. Like nowadays, the orange and the red and the brown are almost impossible to tell apart from some manufacturers. But there is that. Uh, we've got... Yeah. Components, so if you want to go through your building material, understanding electronic components, well, I guess that's helpful if you don't know anything about resistors, that'll help you. Capacitors, it goes through those, okay, it tells you about diodes, potentiometers, so the first seven pages so far are just some basics. And we're up to page eight, painting your petal enclosure, which I don't need to do. Got it finished. All right, so on page eight, number two, install three diodes in the linear voltage regulator. Oh, it's not, okay, so that's not a, uh, a transistor. It's a voltage regulator. All right, my bad. Looked like a transistor. Well, I guess that's where we start, and we'll put those on. And then we need to go through and figure out what all the resistors are. I think there are 31 of them total, if I remember right. Well, that's my first impression. I would say overall, the, the components look decent, although I'll have to test some to be sure. The potentiometers look of decent quality. You know, the PCB looks pretty good too. <coughs> Uh, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's dual sided. Uh, although nowadays these are easy to get made, not hard to do. Uh, hopefully the three PDT switch is of a good enough manufacturer that it'll hold up to some abuse. Uh, the rest of the components look pretty decent. So initial impressions is doesn't stink. Uh, it looks pretty decent. The instructions are fairly well laid out. They are definitely thorough, and if you don't know electronics that well, you could definitely just grab this pedal kit and build it because it goes through the basics really well. And I think I will start on that. I'm going to go and figure out which resistors are which, and number and label them, organize them, and then I'm going to go solder up these diodes. And then we'll be back. Back here real quick, I started going through the resistors to figure out their values. And these eyes just aren't as good as they used to be, so I thought I'd pull out and show you a way to kind of cheat. If you have a decent little multimeter, set it to resistance or capacitance, grab your resistor, just connect it up to see what it is. What do we have here? 4.66, which is a 4.7K. What's this one? What do we got? 9.98K. 9.98, so what is that? NK, and there should be eight of those. What is this one? Come on. 99.8K ohm. Well, that's 100K then. So we can put that in the 100K pile. And how many of those do we have? We should have 100K. So we have our 100. And I will take these and I will label them so I know which ones are which. I'll be back in 31 resistors. I went through all of the resistors and checked all their values. And here's another little trick I use. I save these plastic containers that components come in, the little part sorters. And I just made up some quick labels and dropped in there. So as I test them, I can drop them in. And the idea then is I'm going to verify them against the bill of materials here to make sure I have the right counts of each one. So we'll go through and check 1K, there is one of them. Yes, 4.7K, there is one of them. 10K, there's supposed to be eight. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. Eight of those, yes. 
20k there is one 22k there is three 47k there should be three we have three 100k should be one 220 should be two 470 should be two we have two and one meg resistor should be one and we have one so there now i've gone through and they're all set aside labeled so we know which ones are which i can shut these now and set them aside and at least they are sorted and organized for that and then what we can do is the same thing for the capacitors i have another little sorter here and i, I again i save all of these and i put uh, little sorters back in for this so we uh, there's not a ton of them and we will number them and then verify those against the, the bill of materials the bomb as they call it make sure that we have all of those so i will do that next and be back i'm back again i can't remember where i was got the resistors all sorted out and i started going through all of the capacitors to make sure that all of them match the bill of materials so same thing one of the little bin sorters made a couple of labels up started sorting parts to make sure and all of them appear to be here the problem is these two caps i'm not entirely sure which ones they are uh this little one it actually looks like that sort of no i'm not entirely positive which one's which and they're not really labeled that well so this one is labeled it just says 100 slash 100. Uh, I'm guessing that is this 100 picofarad capacitor. And it just says 100 slash 100. So I'm, I'm betting that's the one pico. And this other one is supposed to be 102J, it says. But on the thing, it says 102K. I guess that's close enough. So we got 102K. All the other ones sorted out. So use these numbers on the sides to figure them out. Uh, they're numbered on the side generally. But I went through and here's all the caps, diodes, and other stuff. So we'll set that aside too. And now we got those parts. Let's see what's next. I think we actually get to start soldering here soon. Well, okay, this is more inventory. All right, so here we are back to this. Let me get these instructions out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all righty, yeah, actually, so I actually get to solder. I guess I should probably turn the iron on, right? So I can actually do something, but here we've got that we need. And we need some resistors. Actually, no, we need uh, diodes. Right, set the resistors aside. We need, what do we need? One in, uh, two of those diodes and one of those diodes. We need all three diodes. One, two, three. And we need the voltage regulator. Here it is. And I think, well, let's see. Where do the diodes go? Third one down. So let's make sure we get them the right way. Now I'm gonna go do this off camera and I'll be back when step two is done. And here we are back again. It's been a couple of days since my last video. I honestly kind of don't remember where I left off. I'm going to try to. Mm. Coffee, late at night, same old, same old. Um, I remember I was saying I had the capacitor sorted, and I think I then said I was going to solder the, uh, the diodes and the voltage regulator on, which, I, look here, I went ahead and did. And... That went just fine, you know, do your diodes the right way, make sure polarity is set and you know, away you go. So then I set it aside, I'm like, all right, well, let's move on to the next step. 
So I had sorted all of the resistors out into these trays to make sure when I checked the bill of materials to make sure I had all of them and I had to you know, figure out which values they were. And I thought, all right, you know, let's move on to step three. So that's where we are at now. I am on step three and I've done it. And I think I'm gonna do this, you know, before and after each section. Because it's kind of a good running, you know, here's how it's going. But where do I start on number three? You know, it seems easy. You're just soldering resistors on. Here's the problem. On the board, the PCB, the width of the, the spacing of the, the, the holes is too short for the resistors. So they all kind of go sideways. And note on here, they tell you this on the instructions, but what they don't tell you is that Larger resistors will need to be placed on the board at an angle. What they don't tell you is that essentially every resistor on the board is that way, except for one. Uh, so what you end up with is a whole bunch of resistors sitting cockeyed. Uh, now, so if, so here's the thing. They could fix this in a couple of ways. Bring those holes closer together so you can put the resistor up and bring the other lead down. With them farther apart, the resistor has to sit like this. And there's no way, unless you have it sit way up on both sides, or you have it sit way down on one. Like in the picture here, they do. That's what actually they're showing right there. So, you know, they could bring the holes together and you could have them upright. And there's probably, I mean, it looks like there's enough room to clear that in the, the pedal housing the enclosure, so they could do that. Or they could really just make these holes the right size. So a surface mount resistor, fits in there or include components that are the smaller size. But as is, as you can see, pretty much every resistor on here is sitting cockeyed. All of them are because the, the holes are too close. So let's see, why do they make it so small? Probably to keep the board size down. I don't think it would affect cost that much. Okay, board size down, let's look in here. You know what? There is absolutely plenty of room inside of here to use for more PCB space. If they increase the width of every resistor on here, I don't think they'd add but two or three millimeters in each direction. It, it might go a little further to the outside, but they certainly have room to go up around here and in other spots. I get it. You're better off going smaller then and putting them up like this. There's enough room to clear. Uh, the end result is I'm just not happy about this PCB. That's the part I just, I don't like it. Now, maybe you know, this is one of my first kit pet. Well, it's my second kit pedal. The other one, although the other one, the Klon was bigger. So the PCBs were bigger. I have not built a 1590B size like this. This is my first one, so maybe this is the norm. Uh, one thing I found helpful to do to keep track is as you're going through and soldering them on, keep track of how many you're putting on the board and which ones you're doing. The drawings are really pretty good here. That shows you where to go. And the PCB, uh, the labeling is done really well so you know which resistors go in which spots. Problem I had was going, did I get them all in? Why do I have two left over here? What are they? Where do they go? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So what I did was, as I went through, I would just scratch them off with a pencil. So I know, and if I did, if there's one, like I did one check mark, like down here, there's eight, there's actually be four. I did five, six, seven, eight, right? There's one of those, one of those. So I, I should be able to check, you know, the check boxes to make sure that I actually install all of them and then scratch them off when I'm done, which actually I did these two last. Yep, yep, all of them are done. And this was my visual verification uh, on the instructions and then I could verify on the board. So between the two, I found that to be really helpful. I think there are 31 resistors that went on here. I put those on and I went ahead and I put on the, um, the dip switches, but, or sorry, the, the, the dip sockets. And uh, I probably shouldn't have, but you know, I had to clean out a solder joint that was dirty and I just put them on while I was there. So 
We are now up to step four. So I'm gonna look over it here real quick. We'll kind of go over it and then I'll step away, finish it and come back and let you know. It might be a day before I come back. <laughs> Although today's Friday, so I'll probably have time. So here are steps four and five, which appear to be 26 total capacitors going in. Uh, we got 10 up here. Uh, that's the electrolytics. And down here are the, uh, the non-polarized, like the, uh, I think there's a couple, like a couple tantalum and, uh, and film capacitors down there. So we have the electrolytics first, and I have those all sorted out. Yeah, and these are polarized, so you have to make sure they're in the right way. So in this case, we got, uh, was that a 1 micro and a 10 micro? So what do we got for 1 micros? No? 10s. There's 1. Ah, there they are. Those are the ones. So we got ones. How many did we say we got to put in? All right. He's out. Come on. Five of those. So two of the tens. We got 10 and 10. And we got three of the bits. So, uh, okay. This is good. This is basically all of the electrolytics. All right, so what do we see here? Uh, positive and negative up and down. So, there's the negative. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Let's see how they fit. Well, these actually look to fit pretty well. This one goes negative the other way. Give up. All right, this looks like it's uh, actually not going to be too bad. These, well, let's we'll see when we get to the bigger ones, right? Well, let's try one of the bigger ones here first. Uh, hundreds. That's the 100 micros. So where are the 100 micros? Actually, so let me mark these off. I did this one. And I did this one. No, shit. I did this wrong already. Oops. Probably see that. That's a 1. That's a 10. All right. Aaron, sit back. Think about this better. You're not paying attention here. The one, the one does go over here. There's the one. Ten. Goes down. Yep, now we got a little bit bigger one. Yes, it's, it's kind of crooked, but oh well. This board's just uh, really, really tight. Maybe they're all that way. I don't know. Let's try all these big ones. A hundred. See how they fit. Is it gonna go? Really? They just barely fit.
Okay, yeah, this this is not great. If you see, because the the diode and the voltage regulator are right in the middle, these two larger electrolytics don't actually fit on the board, and they say it to stick up kind of sideways on either side. Yeah, um, this PCB is kind of stupid. I hope they're not all this way. Nope, not there, Darren. Well, there we got a few on. Um, I'm going to go grumble about this because I'm not terribly happy with it. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get these other wires in there. Like, I don't come in from the back or salt or like stuff's getting covered up by components. It, it wait, why are we doing these capacitors now? Those aren't. You know what? No, number four and number five should be reversed. These are shorter. Yeah, um, they're shorter. If I did it this way, I'm not going to be able to solder the other components on. But these big ones. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, that's going to be impossible. So, I mean, the sort of rule is you start from the bottom of the PCB and solder your way up. So you start with the shorter components ones closer to the board, then you move to the taller ones. Because if you do the taller ones first, and then you go to turn it over to solder on the back, other stuff falls out. So you just move it up in layers and look at how tall these are, right? How much taller than say this is, right? So if I had this on the board and then put this on the board and tried to put this on the board, this is just gonna fall right off. I forgot which one that was, oops. It goes there. Anyways, uh, I, I'm going to actually take these out and I am going to reverse these two orders. I think these little ones could go on. Yeah, they could probably go. But anything taller than that. So here we go back out of here again. Yeah, uh, Stu Mac, not impressed. In fact, this is like, I'm so not impressed that I really don't want to finish it. And that's not a good place to be in. So, anyways, like I said, I'm going to go grumble. Take a time, some time off. Think about it. Read this again. Think it through a little more. And then go and do it. And I'll be back after it's done. Hello again. I'm back. Uh, steps four and five. It's been another day. Um, Saturday today. So I slept in. But I did manage to get all the capacitors on this thing. And I'm going to kind of go over what I found with this and where I'm going to go from here. Okay. Um, so here's what we got. Here's the board. In the instructions, step four says to put the electrolytics on, which I don't agree with. They are taller, as I mentioned in the last video. Then it says to put on the other capacitors. I'm saying do those in reverse order, and that's what I did, and it worked out better. So I put on all the, uh, these are what, the polyester, polypropylene, whatever sort of film capacitors, and kind of go through kind of what I found here. So what, and you notice some notes down here. Here's my notes for these capacitors. Um, so the number on this one, um, has a JN163 in the number, and that's literally just not anywhere in the, in the kit. The closest is a J100, so I use that. Uh, most of the other ones uh, were present and labeled. Uh, this one was confusing. They say it's a 102J. The only thing in here is a 102K, so I assume that was close enough, and I used that here. Um, then we get down to, so, this one in particular. And this one says it is a 100 picofarad capacitor. 
and it just says 100. The part that came with was a film cap and it literally would not fit on the board with the resistor next to it. It was too wide. It would sit off to the side and then this electrolytic cap capacitor would hit up against it and none of them would fit. So I did try to test fit these electrolytics from this step up here while I was doing this and that's when I discovered that. So what I did was I grabbed 100 Pico out of my inventory that's much smaller and put in there. So here's what I figured out. On this board, these resistor sp spots are pretty sure they're meant for eighth watt resistors. And the board kit came with quarter watt resistors. That's why none of them fit. The one that it does fit looks like it's an eighth watt. So not impressed with that. It really is just kind of a shitty way to do things. So I sent out a tweet today to Stu Mac asking them, hey, what's up? And I also sent an email into customer service there saying this is just absolute BS. Like this kit, just you shouldn't have to deal with this, especially for 80 bucks. So then I put all those on. Well, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I swapped out the cap because the other one wouldn't fit. And I did best guess on these other two because they don't match what's in their bill of materials. It's close, but uh, who knows? Uh, no, no reasons why. But the, so then I did all that. I got all those on. Then I came back and I went ahead and I started putting on some of the electrolytics. Again, bottom up. So these are taller. Put on the smaller ones. Again, checked them off. You know, scrubbed them off here. Put those on, except for these last three, the larger size ones. And these are what? Uh, 100 microfarad capacitors. I didn't put these on yet. Why? Because as I was fitting, and we'll get to the next steps, if you put it on here, on this side, it covers up the holes for the potentiometers. So you're unable to get in and solder the potentiometers, which are in a future step. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna save these until after the potentiometers are done. So at this point, all of the parts are on, on uh, maybe I'll show some pictures up here right now what it looks like too, if I can grab some, so you can see it before I go on to the next step. Again, all the capacitors are on, do this in reverse order, and leave these off for now. And I made notes down the instructions here, so if anybody in the future from Stumac wants to know what to change, I've got notes on what to change here. So that leads us to number six and number seven which uh, looks pretty simple we put the ic's on and i will add that it's kind of bullshit that they didn't include one socket for this ic it's two that's stupid i get why you did it you didn't want to bomb another part i don't care for 80 bucks and then the next step is the wire uh number seven so six put the chips on easy enough we'll do that although i'm tempted to leave that till the very end just in case and then uh, wiring. So I'm not sure. I read through it and it said to cut eight of them into two inch sections and two of them into four inch sections, which I have. <coughs> so now it says to solder these two inch sections, which by the way, are a real pain in the ass the strip because they're so short. Uh, Stu Mac hint. <coughs> Two inch solid uh, hookup wire that's already pre stripped. You can buy these and you can include them in the kit so we don't have to do this at home. There, there's another one. I'll, I'll make a note for you right here. These. Good. Come. Re. Cut. And I know you can get pre cut wires. You're just cheaping out. Admit it. So, what I'm going to do is solder those on. And then the next step after that is the, the switch. So, it's here, and you got to solder that on. So the next step after that is to, I will go ahead and solder that on. 
and these four down here so from what i can tell we got what four wires yep one two three four so four of them go from there to here the four in the middle all right and then the two longer ones go on the outside it looks like on the outside two longer ones run yep all the way up I don't know what those go to. Mm -mm. LED goes there. Oh, I see. That's the that's the signal connectors and power connectors and whatnot. Power signal. Okay, I see. So I will go ahead and solder wires on. I will do number six, number seven. Well, I'm gonna say, you know, I'll just do it. Number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. And that should get us up to number 10. And after I get these potentiometers, because you have to turn it over to do these potentiometers, uh, use the sticky tape, got to remove, okay, at that. Once I get the potentiometers on, I could probably do that now too. We'll just wait. Once I get the pots on, then I can turn it over, put these last three capacitors in. And at that point, I should be almost ready to be done, right? Um, so I guess we'll see. All right, I'm back. Got a bunch done. Got uh, part six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 done. No coffee. Down to Mountain Dew now gonna go over what I did and what I learned in this process one thing of note I was right about the electrolytics those big ones would have gotten the way so here we go let's start number six put the two uh, ICs in which I did easy done number seven part seven um, solder these eight wires on I did again pre-cut pretend would be great guys Uh, eight, step eight. Um, so here's something interesting. It's this uh, soldering the three PDT switch on. So what's interesting is one, it, one side says this side down and uh, they don't say which side they mean down, like down like this or down like this. So I looked over the picture and figured it out, but so then I, I soldered that on. I need to clean it up. The, the oh, yuck. Yeah, what is it with this modern flux solder? It's sticky. Got to clean it up. I'll do that next. Uh, did that. And then down here where it says to connect them all up, did that, connected them here to here, made sure that I got the right ones. Let's just double check again. Yep. In ground. Uh, yep. So just need to clean those up. And did that. Turn the page, go to number 10. So step 10 is soldering the potentiometers on. And one of the tricks that it says on here is to put them on here and use that to hold it, which is actually a really good tip. Remember that one. So I, I took the four potentiometers, make sure you're, you're flipping the picture over in your mind or you know here to here, because you're looking at it here, it's like this. And when you turn it over, they're, they're flipped backwards. So make sure you get the right ones in the right spots. Put the tape on the back. Put them in there. And I actually, I, I used the nuts and actually tightened them down a little bit. And then put the board in there and soldered them all on. And at that point, I went to put on those three electrolytics, the big ones that I hadn't done yet. And I suddenly realized I was right. And if you look here now, you can see down in here, that's where the potentiometers are soldered. And the capacitors, this one, this one, and this one gets in the way. There's no way you can get a soldering iron in there. So I would say between steps 10 and 11, well, or after 11, after this, so that gets them all on. Yeah, I would say like 
make note. 11A. Solid our last three large electrolytics in place, which I haven't actually done yet. I put them on the board, and that's where I've got to right now. So I got it up to here. Everything's on there. Everything looks okay. As far as I can tell, everything, I just need to clean the board up of the flux. And that will put me on to the next stage. So let's look at this real quick here. I have not looked at this yet. Set that aside. What do we do here? Uh, well, we put in... That's interesting, yeah, we put that in, put the LED in place, put that in. So they tell you to pass the longer positive lead of the lead through the eyelet marked A, the anode, and the shorter negative lead through the K, cathode. Yep, short to the negative. That's how I remember that. I always remember short to the negative. I, I don't know how it does, but that's what I do to remember LEDs and diodes. Negative goes to ground, short to the negative. Yeah, whatever. So put that in. So we do that. We do that. Put that in. And it looks like we as sort of assemble it there. So 11, 12, um, 13, 14. Put the DC jack. Solder the inside left part of the longer lug. Yeah, so we have to check that. <clears throat> so I guess I could start installing this and this, right? And then we put on the input jack. The output jack and it's done. So let's see, what do I have left to do? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Boy, we're almost there. I might be able to test this thing out yet tonight. We shall see. I am going to go and I'm gonna go try and finish this right now. When I come back, maybe it's done. Maybe I'm playing it. I don't know. We'll see. More to come. We're back with the last part. So this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, basically the last part of all the instructions. So on number 11 here with the LED, I put that in, however, I don't think the LED is going in all the way. You, you kind of need to actually do like an angle on it, which I don't particularly care, as long as I can see the light. Uh, this part is actually pretty helpful. It does help you how to solder the LED in and get it in correctly, or sorry, get it in correctly. And the DC jack, same thing, got that in. Uh, and I gotta say, the, uh, the input jack, uh, the instructions, I wish all the un other instructions were as good as this. this. This, like, should be the reference on how you should wire input and output jacks. It describes everything that you need to know in really good detail. Say so output jack. So I put them in, I soldered them in, and there it is. I think I'm done. So much so that I went ahead and put the board in, mounted everything, put on the, need to adjust the, the pots a little bit, but I don't like the red, oh well, you know, and I put the stickers on. So I actually think, I think it might be actually time to try it out and go for a smoke test. What do you think? Plug it in and see what happens? <laughs> well, you'll know when I come back <laughs> soon. Well, plugged it in, put it in line right after the clone centaur and the clone tar on the input side of the guitar, not in the loop. I'm trying to try it there first, see how it is. Might be better in the loop. We'll find out later. Um, so plugged it in, input output jack, plugged in nine volts, no smoke, no, no magic blue smoke, no sparks, no fire, no smell, more importantly. I plugged in the guitar and it works. Uh, sounds decent. Uh, I got to mess with it a little bit, but uh, SOB, yeah, it works. Uh, another pedal built. 
Not terribly fond of this one. I don't know if I'd buy another Stumac kit. If I do, I'm probably not going to use their components that comes with, which is kind of useless. Well, you know, they call everything but like resistors or capacitors because they don't seem to fit very well in their PCBs. Maybe their other PCBs are better. I don't know. But anyways, it's working. Um, for sound, I got to get my rig set back up here. I only have OBS running right now. Got to get Reaper set back up and routed in from the input from the amp, the DI, and all that. And then, you know, if I'm in the mood, I'll play something. But, you know, if not, you can consider this the end. Uh, it does work. This is the whole thing from start to finish. Good, bad, and other. Uh, hopefully I can get this edited and up and posted really soon. Um, so, enjoy. Okay, plugged in. See how it sounds. Here's this clean, nothing, this is completely dry guitar. All right, so I'm going to add the, uh, the new delay. on well overdrive well, let's see how it sounds let's uh take the time up a little slower Oh, how deep it repeats. That's cool. You gotta go forever. What if it'll feed back? Yeah, you could. A little too much. Straight to tone. This sounds like a mid sweep. a little bit but that's kind of what it sounds like anyways i guess that's the end of this video so um take care i'm gonna go play some more bye